Welcome to the Alive Lauren podcast, the place of celebrating juicy, soulful, whole living. And a place that I have not visited <laughs> or shared in very recently for what feels like a very long time with some odd sharing a little while ago. Hey, so actually, and also part of this whole exercise and what inspired this sharing was something that I'd come across from Rachel Naomi Riemann. And in, even in right now today, because what just happened was I started recording this and then I went on this tangent of Rachel Naomi Riemann and I couldn't remember <laughs> why I'd started speaking about her. So I had to actually pause to go back to listen to the beginning to understand. And then I saw that I'm walking and using like this mic of the headset and it was bouncing on my scarf. So there was terrible interference and it sounded awful. And it was only because <laughs> I couldn't remember. It was like everything, just to trust, to trust that everything is perfectly choreographed in a way that we don't, we can't even begin to fathom. If we can just melt more into life and be like the surfers on the sets of waves of life who are just out there looking to catch the next wave and surfing it to the best of your ability to enjoy that wave for that set, for its size. And sometimes you ride out a set of smaller waves. Sometimes you try get a big wave and you get tumbled and you get thrown, like just making the best and just getting back, getting back on that surfboard and going back out there for the next life. Like, just being grateful for the opportunity to be out there surfing. So be grateful for the opportunity of being here in life's unfolding. All of it. All of it. With less preference and less dual, like more of a non-dual, like a, just a welcoming of all. Um, which I know is easier said than done. I get that. I get that. But even now, it's just this little example of start recording. I can't remember why the hell I've started to speak about Rachel Naomi Remini. Then I go back and listen and it's like, oh, shite. I can't actually. <laughs> this is very annoying for somebody else to listen to. It's one thing for a car driving by once in a while. Um, but to actually have like the noise of the mic chafing up against the scarf is really, really not, not great. So the reference to Rachel Naomi Remini, which now I remember... And why I started the podcast in the first place was she has two beautiful books, Kitchen Table Wisdom and My Grandfather's Blessings, which are compilations of short stories where she has journeyed as a patient as well as a doctor and then worked for many years with cancer patients and I think maybe still does and with doctors training them and dealing with cancer patients and people sharing the most incredible stories of their gratitude for their journeys with cancer and how it's transformed them to actually be more present and more conscious and more alive and more grateful. And in this episode, so then I also heard Rachel recently, she does like a talk with another woman and it's more just like a free form on a topic and their topic is gratitude and the idea that it's something that we are so all humans seem to just be more naturally wired to be blind to gratitude. And on the simplest level, like if you even need a paperclip and you find a paperclip, like when you can't find a thing you need, it can be the simplest thing, a pin, a needle, a spoon. Like even in making a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, like all the elements, when you can boil clean water and have a cup or a mug and a spoon and the tea and whether it's in a bag or whether you've got the thing to like strain it like all these things all these things each one of them like perfectly made for its task and it's like if we really had weren't blind to the stuff we take for granted it's like we could live in more of a permanent state of such awe and wonderment so one of the practices that Rachel when she works with the doctors is who feel like detached from their work and their patients and and, and, you know, why they originally got into medicine or, you know, it's like actually looking at your day. And then at the end of the day, there's various things. And I think one of them is like, what? Oh, my goodness. That's just so really, really noisy. Um, I wonder if I go down this road, what will happen? Um, that, um, what inspired? What inspired you today? Like, what made you smile? Um, and 
just that life does gift if you look that thing of like you know when you look for how many red cars you saw and you don't see any but then if you start to like look out for red cars you notice them it's like we notice what we focus what we put our focus and attention on so when you're actually like looking and mindful of things that inspire you they're there they're there it's like this hide and seek it's like this game of life that opportunities of beauty are there it's a case of if you find them so the whole thing of the podcast was really like an exercise for me to actually put the time in to honor what life has gifted um, and the beauty in the day and the gifts in the day and the insights in the day and to actually honor it by taking a few minutes to put it into words and to share it um, in the hope that maybe somebody else can be inspired to look at their day and see what has inspired them and made them smile that they're grateful or some intuitive nudge or aha or whisper from the universe of reassurance. Oh. So, yeah, I am doing this again tonight for that. And um, part of it was then also just relaxing more into trusting everything as it's unfolding so I had this dream I went to like this TRE this tremor release um, therapy session last night and I'm not the greatest dreamer I know many people work with their dreams and I have at times tried and had a book next to the bed and um, but she did mention like just be aware you may have vivid dreams and I wake up from this like incredibly vivid dream um, at the moment that I'm busy like consoling or like embracing someone with like reassuring them around how it's okay to be with where you're at and if you're feeling sad or, or like challenging emotions to be with them and that the time will come you know where you process through them and it passes but it's okay to be with them and as the part that I wake up in this very stark wake up is this message of like the hand of God, like it's the hand of the universe, like just to trust the unfolding. And if something, if you're grieving for something that you thought you wanted or that didn't happen, it's because it's not where you're meant to be. Like everywhere you're meant to be is actually perfect. And that just to more trust, like it's okay to feel the grief and the loss, but also just to have this, to live from this place of like absolute trust and ease and just realize how little we're in control of. And just, yeah, that summary of how little we're in control of, you know, like living in Israel at the moment with things that are happening and missiles and, and just thinking like I'm traveling from one part of the country to the other tomorrow and wondering, you know, if I even arrive on the other end, you know, because like a missile could fire and some part of the train can get fight, like hit. like. But it's it's just like we never know. It's not that you need to live in a time of war to feel insecurity it's like this the sense of security is an illusion because every every moment you don't know if you've got your next breath like literally and sometimes just living in times when on the outside it seems more unpredictable i think it's just reminding us of that it always is as unpredictable and there's so little like in every moment also that just reminder like something happened to my foot where it's gotten all like multicolored and bruised I can't walk on it so well. I can't remember doing anything that caused it. But just like how every moment of every cell, of everything that's functioning in the body, like I don't do anything to make it work. I'm, I'm not in control. I just, I just get to inhabit this incredible avatar that in every moment, like you could spend a lifetime just trying to understand what happens in one moment to make life in this one body possible. And yeah, so just remembering that and remembering also just to trust and relax more into things because then um, a friend of mine wanted to gift me like one of like a red thread that we'd each wear like a piece of and she didn't have a scissors. And then I remembered my grandfather had this way of teaching, like he showed me this way of breaking like a thread or string without a scissors. And I just thought, like, I was just asking him, I was just calm. 
and he's not here anymore. Like he's passed on energetically. But I remember just saying to him, like, please just just remind me, just show me how to do this again. And I had I just couldn't remember at all. And like it just like it came back and I just felt like he was there and he somehow just showed me and reminded me again how to do it. And yeah, it was just how it wasn't by force. It was just by gently being open and being in the moment and just trusting. Ah, yeah. So we do never know. And to be okay, here it is, here it is. Being okay with the not knowing and to being more open to just surrendering into where we find ourselves. Wow, the current in which we find ourselves, it is an expression of the current moment, of life itself. And to be able to live it from a place of trust and faith that we're always okay and that it's okay to be with the grief and with the challenging emotions but that it, there is there's a surety knowing that everything is exactly as it's meant to be and we're, we're okay oh god and i just let this go and i hope it hasn't gone crazy at the end oh so that is two happy adventuring along those lines until we meet again Mwah.